Alright, so here's what you're going to need. First of all, this is um, basically a custom wiring solution for the 4th generation Super Legacies and 3rd generation Super Outbacks. So what I have here, I'll put it in the link description below, but basically this is a guy that makes custom harnesses out of the US. So this is just your normal 14 pin harness adapter which will go to your aftermarket stereo. And this is something that's particular to the Subaru. So this is called the I-85 adapter. And what this does is basically allows you to install the JDM doubled in conversion because this plug actually here plugs into the climate control. So I will put the links into the description of where to get this. If you have a 2007 to 2009, so the later part of the generation, you will also want a I-88 adapter. What that does is it'll let you retain your factory steering wheel controls for your audio and also your aux input. Mine is a 2007, so I do actually have aux input, but since the head unit that I got doesn't have an external audio source, I just chose to not get that. And that way, basically, if I wanted to go back to the original head unit, I could still install it. So, the next thing we have is our actual double bin conversion. So, I got this used, so it might not look exactly the same as what you would get when you order new, but everything should be, the content should be the same. So you're gonna get a bunch of little Phillip heads screws. You're going to get a ground cable and then basically your antenna cable. Your brackets for the actual head unit itself. Your doubled in faceplate. So on the factory cars for North American versions anyways, the Japanese ones sometimes actually have this pre-installed already. But in the US and Canada, we basically have a stereo that's already integrated with the climate control. So taking out the climate control portion, you can see here on the JDM one, it's actually two separate pieces where the USDM one is fully connected so you can't actually separate them. So in, store, in order to install an aftermarket stereo um, to replace yours, you'd have to get this kit. So basically, this is the main thing that you're after. I mean, there are threads where you can separate the original factory climate control from the st stereo itself and then get a, like, and this only applies to cars with the like climate control, like the automated electric ones. If you have a manual one, you can actually get them separately. So that's not a huge big deal. But if you have a standard dual or single climate control um, car, then you'd need to get this conversion. So putting those aside, um, the next thing that you're gonna want is this little guy. So this is a JDM hazard switch. So on the USDM one, you actually have your hazard switch on the right side, but with the JDM panel, you have it on the left. You can modify your USDM one, but I chose just to grab this one. This was fairly inexpensive, so I figured it's better just to get a new replacement that actually works with it than to fiddle around. All right, so here I have basically the deck assembled with the double din conversion. So the deck that I went with is a Sony AVX AX100. So this is a really popular deck because it's pretty inexpensive and it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability. And it's really nice to install because if you look at the back, it's actually just a single DIN size in the back with a dual DIN front. So installation is pretty easy. Unfortunately, due to the design of this plate, it actually sits in a little bit. And this is a common problem that a lot of people have. You can still use the volume knob and everything, but it's kind of butted inside. So you can't really grab it with your finger on the left side but you can still turn it all the way. So basically what we did to assemble everything is these are the support brackets that come with the doubled in conversion. So if you notice on the skinnier portion, that goes towards the bottom and you'll tell which side it goes on because these basically side pieces, they'll stick towards the outside. So you line up this bottom hole and then this top hole, there's a tab actually on the climate control portion where you just line up, you attach it to there and then Using the supplied screws, you put in one there, and then two also go on this top portion into the support. 
And then obviously you take your supplied screws with your head unit and you screw it into this top portion to hold everything in. So basically this is pre-assembled and we can move on to the wiring. All right, so this is your wiring harness. So basically I've gone ahead and already connected everything together using butt connectors. But as you can see, basically you have your 14 pin. This is the adapter from um, a64.com, David Carter. He's the guy that makes these harnesses. So basically you want to follow his instructions. He will email you all the instructions when you order it through him. Um, and the only other thing you want to reference is basically your pinout diagram for your aftermarket radio harness. Um, for my situation, all of the colors on the aftermarket harness actually matched up with the wires that David uses as well, so that was really easy. There's two wires on mine that I didn't use. One is this purple wire, which is uh, purple and white. And it's labeled as reverse in, so this one is for any time you have a reverse backup camera connected to your car. And the second one is your parking brake. This is basic, if I remember correctly, it's to disable your movie functionality or kind of playback and stuff like that when the car is in motion. But if you don't connect this, I'm pretty sure you can just bypass that. Um, the other thing to mention is that David's connector, this 14 pin, adapter it already comes with the harness kind of pre-cut at the terminals all you have to do is slide the protective sheathing off except my aftermarket harness it didn't have any wires exposed so if you don't have one grab yourself a wire stripper and also a crimper um, alternatively you could use a soldering iron to solder your connections together I kind of feel I'm not really confident with my soldering skills and crimping is a lot easier so that's the route that I went and basically the next step is to take this out to the car. So now that we're in the car we're gonna take out the original factory stereo system. So first thing you want to do you want to remove this middle shifter area panel. So with the manual it's a little bit different with the automatic because the automatic actually has the shift lever but it's all a solid piece there isn't a boot. So with the manual transmission, what you want to do first off is to take off your shift knob. So now I have an aftermarket Tomei shifter. Um, so this process is a little bit different. Basically this one, it just screws off and that's it. If you have the factory knob, it'll screw off, but then it'll, once it's disengaged all the threads, it'll keep on spinning because it's actually attached to the boot itself. So what you want to do if you have the factory shift knob is grab the bottom, like the top portion of the boot and the shift knob, and then just kind of pry it apart. It's seated in there with the plastic ring, so it's not on there super tight, and that's how you take the factory one off. So after you have the shift knob removed, basically just grab around the shift boot and just pull up, and it'll and it's just held in with pop clips. So once you have one side free, come over to the other side. Same thing. So now that you have that disengaged, you just kind of work it. until you have it free. So basically, um, once you do that, you can slowly pull it out and you wanna remember to disconnect the plug-in for the cigarette component. And it's just a little white connector at the back. That's this one here. So once we have that removed, basically the next pieces that we wanna take off are these side pieces. Um, they're held in here at the front with two Phillips head screwdrivers. So all we got to do, take a Phillips head, these probably have never been taken out in the car, so they're held on pretty tight. screw number two and then all you have to do is kind of work your way again this one is held in by clips um, and you want to just kind of pull the panels forward so just work your way from the bottom and then kind of work your way up towards the top
And if you have um, one of those plastic trim remover tools, that would be really helpful here because then it, you won't risk scratching or damaging anything. Um, if you don't have that, you could use a, just a normal Phillips head screwdriver and kind of work your way around. Alright, so now with our two side trim pieces out of the way, you can see the screws that hold in the actual climate control and factory stereo. So you have four screws on each side, one, two, three, and then there's one inset deep kind of down below that's around this area. So you have the same thing on either side, so what you want to do is just take those screws out and it should be able to slide out. So this one, since it's deep kind of far in there, um, just when you have it loosened up, I would just kind of either use a magnet tool or stick your finger in there to make sure that it doesn't fall down and get lost. One thing I'll point out when you're taking these screws out on the side, um, they're all actually not the same style. So the bottom and the top screws, so the ones at this point here and this point here, they have kind of a more of a pointy tip. And then the middle two screws, so the one here and then the one that's inset on inside, they have kind of like a flat bottom. I'm not too sure how important that is, but just something to keep track of when you're taking these out because in case they do interfere with each other, then at least you know the order that they go back in. So with that all disconnected, the only other thing that I'll do is put this transmission into reverse just so we have enough clearance for this to slide everything out. And since this is threaded, it might not be a bad idea to kind of wrap it in a microfiber towel just so it's protected. I'm just going to put a old glove that is already kind of wrecked. Just do that so we pr prevent from scratching anything. So now we can kind of just wiggle this entire assembly out. And once we have it out far enough, we can start disconnecting everything. So the one thing I will mention, so other than the hazard switch clip, which is this one, where the tab that you have to press in to release it is that one's on the bottom. All the other ones are actually on the top. So these are this this is the one that goes into the climate control system. I believe this one is your ground, and this one is the 14 pin that goes into your stereo. And the only other one is this gray clip over here. I believe that one's the antenna, but if not, I will address that in the future. And yeah, so with that out of the way. Now we can hook up our harness that we wired to the existing car harness. So we can take our 14 pin and just make sure that it's properly aligned. You have, um, in the middle section, there's pins on the bottom, but no pins on the top. So make sure that's in the right orientation. Then we'll click that in. Then we have our connector here. But I believe these ones actually only go in in one certain direction anyhow. Um, it's not a one size fits all, so we can connect that one. There's this one, um, you might not have this on your car if it's an earlier year, but this one is for your steering wheel and aux controls. So we have that all connected. This parking brake sensor we're not gonna use, so we'll just leave that be. Next thing that we wanna connect is our antenna. So this one I believe is this gray connector that we disconnected. That's kind of on the left side here down below. So that clips in and that'll plug into our new stereo. So with the new stereo out, there's this ground cable. Um, that one, there's a very thin connector that we just slide it into this little guy here and it just clips in and you want to make sure that that ground is connected to the actual stereo portion so the screws that mount your stereo to the bracket then the next thing we're going to do is take our connector for the climate control make sure it's in the right orientation plug that in 
And lastly, we want to take our 14 pin connector for the stereo and we'll just put that in. All right, so now with everything clipped in, I'm just gonna turn on the car and make sure that everything fires up before I tidy up the install. So our deck is working, but our climate control isn't. So let's see what's wrong. All right, so here's gonna be the reason why this wasn't working um, in the previous clip. So this is the original HVAC unit that I had that I was putting into the car. And this is our new one. So the reason why this wasn't working, this is actually a single zone climate control system. So if you notice, this left hand side is just for fan controls. This right hand side is just for temperature control. I didn't realize this and the seller that I bought this from actually advertised it as a dual zone one. But alas, as you can see, it's a single zone. So this is our dual zone one. So this is very similar to the actual North American unit with the dual zone climate control. So temp, temp, passenger, and driver side. In this case, it's swap because it's the JDM one, but right like right and left correspondingly, and then you have your fan controls here. Um, we pull over, this is the factory head unit. So as you can see, basically the controls are mirrored here. So it's essentially, as long as your factory controls look the same, then those are the right ones. This was not. So let's get back to the install. All right, so a thing that you're gonna have to do before you do this conversion, so this is the passenger side or the right side of the car right now. Um, there is a space here that's basically a clearance um, spot for the hazard switch. Whereas on the left side, it's usually boxed off here. So what you wanna do is you wanna like trim this so that there's enough space for the hazard light to sit there because on the JDM conversion, the hazard light, instead of being on the right side, it's gonna be on the left side. So that's why it's really important to give yourself enough clearance here so that the unit will actually sit properly. So what I did was I trimmed it, kind of thinking how much I would need a trim, test fitted it, turned out I needed a little bit more vertical clearance, so I just cut that a little bit more, and then now it fits perfect. So now we can go ahead and basically connect everything together and put the unit back in. So as you can see here, our JDM climate control system is working as it should being that this is the dual zone car and this car originally came with dual zone from the factory. So as you can see, our temperature controls work as intended. You can change the fan speed and also go into different modes. Um, so the only difference between this one, um, because this is originally developed for a right-hand drive car, your automatic button and your off button are gonna be on the right-hand side. But honestly, it's just a simple swap. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and it's just a great update overall to go to a doubled in setup so you can change to an aftermarket radio. And like I said before, this radio is a Sony XAV AX100. Um, as of some people that I've seen in the past that have do, done this install with this exact deck, they find that it actually sits a little bit too inset. So this volume knob is kind of hidden partially or hidden or blocked by this bezel. So they can only really operate it from the right side. What I did was I actually slotted the holes on the mounting brackets so that the whole unit can actually sit as forward as possible. And now this entire volume knob is exposed. So that didn't really take that much time. You just wanna find a drill bit that's the same size as the holes and then just make sure that you use a punch so that your drill isn't wandering all over the place and slot those holes out and then you'll be ready to go and this will be mounted pretty much as a great way that you should. So this is just a, overall I'm really excited about this modification because now I have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, calling, streaming, and this is a great way to update the interior of the legacy to basically what new cars are coming out on the market. So this should make the driving experience a whole lot better with good sound and good phone connectivity. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and look forward to the next video. Thanks.